In the last episode, we talked about a comparison between various enterprise architecture frameworks, and I covered the foundation of what each framework is. Today, we are going to cover TOGAF and slightly deep dive into what TOGAF framework is and what are the nuances and what are the unique things about the TOGAF framework and how it makes it different from other frameworks. But before we go there, I would like to remind you that if you're enjoying the videos that I'm publishing on Enterprise Architecture Radio, then do let YouTube know, like, share and subscribe and definitely comment. Let me know what you think about these episodes, these shorter formats, and let me know what you would like to hear in the future episodes as well. All right, on to TOGAF then. If TOGAF is a kitchen, then architecture development method is a recipe and the enterprise continuum is a pantry full of reusable components. That's the analogy that I can think of when I talk about TOGAF. Architecture development method, a step-by-step method that helps you build your enterprise architecture. Now, I've been talking about this for a while now. I've said that enterprise architecture frameworks give you a step-by-step, or TOGAF gives you a step-by-step method to build an enterprise architecture uh, within your organization. But what does that really mean? So where would you start? And this is a problem that I faced when I started doing enterprise architecture. I didn't know where to start. My manager had just recently told me that this is what we want to do. Uh, We want to gather information about the business. We want to understand... Uh, you know, all the data that is there within the organization and what are the different business functions that are using this data and uh, how does the data flow and how does it transform and then uh, what are the applications that are doing this data transformation and and what are the technologies that are supporting it and so on. And I was, I, I panicked a little bit because I have no idea. It was a financial services organization, right? And there were so many different business functions. Where would I start? Who would I go and talk to for the first time? You know, so... And then I did my TOGAF framework. So what TOGAF framework does is it gives you a step-by-step method, right? First step or first phase is called a preliminary phase. And it is technically not even a phase, all right? It's, I mean, they call it a phase, but architecture work has not really started in the preliminary phase. You're just getting started and, and you have no idea what you want to do or how you want to do. So what would you do? You start with building an architecture board, for example, or you define which enterprise architecture framework you want to use as a content framework, and then you customize it. You define core principles of the organization. Every organization has their core principles, uh, values, etc. You understand who your stakeholders are and what is it that you're trying to do. Make sure that you have leadership sponsorship, that this is how much it's going to cost us, and, and this is the commitment that would be required from the leadership and so on and so forth. So you you do you lay the foundation of starting to do enterprise architecture before you actually start any work. So you don't start off immediately, right? You start with that core foundation of understanding the people, understanding the environment, understanding the framework, understanding the and so on, right? Getting all the approvals, etc. And then we go to architecture vision. Now, architecture vision is the first phase within architecture development. You, you know, this is where you have a general idea about uh, what is it that you want to do. Now, there are different ways that you can do uh, enterprise architecture. One is you have no idea what you want to do. You just know that the, the, the organization has become chaotic. You have no clue. So you start with a discovery phase. That is one approach. It is called the baseline first architecture, right? You, you investigate. You talk to people, you understand the different business processes, the, you know, uh, the different business functions, organizations, stakeholders, how they are connected to each other, and then go to data or application, and then understand the data and understand the applications, and then you go to technology. That's your baseline. So you understand the baseline first. And once you've understood the baseline, you will understand, okay, these are the gaps we have. These are the holes that we have within the organization. This is what needs fixing. These are improvement areas, right? Based on that, you build a target architecture. This is what you call the baseline first architecture. The other approach that you can take is target first architecture in which you already have a program, right? I want to acquire this particular organization or I want to divest, take this business, take this business function and you know spin it off as a separate organization or sell it off to another organization or what have you, right? Or I want to... Um, or I want to do digital transformation, which is, you know, one of the things. It's I don't take the digital transformation example very much because it's a very core technology specific uh, program, right? And 
when you talk about enterprise architecture it's not about it right enterprise architecture is about the entire business so 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 you know what you want to do you know there is a merger coming a divestiture uh, you know uh, you're moving into a new country to start the business there or what have you it's a large uh, you launching a new product it could be any large transformational program that you already know of right now your target is defined target first architecture right what would you need to run this program or to launch this product or to get through this merger or to divest from this or what have you what is it that you want to do so you collect information specific to that particular program right once you understand so you define your target architecture first you, and you look at it from a business standpoint data standpoint application standpoint technology standpoint all of this and then once you've defined all of this you define your baseline architecture because you need to know where you are if you want to successfully get to where you want to go right so target first architecture now in the architecture vision at a very high level you do one of these either baseline first or target first depending upon your particular situation and then you go to so this is your first phase architecture vision where you define the vision you define what you want to do then you go to business architecture and you study the business you deep dive into the business that you defined your baseline and target uh at a high level in business architecture you go deep down and understand the various business functions various business processes how they align with each other who are the stakeholders what are the goals what are the drivers what are the uh, various product lines that you have or you know what have you core business you understand but if you're doing target first architecture it becomes easier because you're specifically focusing on on that aspect of the business which you are working on you know you have your architecture defined for the target and you are focusing specifically on that particular area only when it comes to baseline first architecture you there's a chance of things being a little bit vague because um because you don't know where you're going so you can then in that case you can you know break your organization down into specific business functions and pick one business function either at random or what have you and then you come to data architecture where you analyze all the data and how you know it transforms and how it changes and um you know and where it is and everything related to the data right and then you do application architecture look at all the different applications that are supporting this data transformation or you know data movement um ultimately supporting the business architecture and then you come to technology architecture which is basically infrastructure you know your data center your public cloud your the core technology components that ultimately support the data and the application architecture and these are the architecture development phases and then you get into uh, opportunities and solutions and migration planning which are your planning phases and then implementation governance is your implementation so architecture teams don't usually do the implementation and that's why the phase is called implementation governance whoever is doing implementation the architecture team performs governance on the core implementation and then you have your um architecture change management once the implementation has been done the change management is start so this is your architecture development method and then you have your content framework which is also by the way defined according to the architecture development method so for example what are the various artifacts that you are creating as a part of architecture vision phase what are the artifacts you are creating as a part of business architecture and data architecture and application architecture this is all predefined now i'm going to I'm not going to list down each and every artifact here but what you have to understand is there are three types of architectural work products there are uh, architectural deliverables which are large documents uh, contractually signed these are simple things like statement of architecture work or statement of work everybody understands the statement of work or architecture contract and so on right these are large documents where stakeholders sign them off and then you have artifacts there are three types of artifacts catalogs matrices and diagrams catalogs are lists of things matrices are tables of things diagrams are pictures of things right so you create these architectural artifacts what are these artifacts i will not get into that we will um, that for that you need to do a full enterprise architecture course toga framework study it you know each frame each phase of the adm has specific catalogs and matrices and diagrams to that particular phase you build those and these catalogs matrices and diagrams will help you collect the information that you need so when you're doing business architecture there are specific catalogs matrices and diagrams which are which will collect information about the business let's say stakeholder matrix 
is a catalog that you create in the business architecture phase where you list down all the stakeholders right um and then and then you have architectural building blocks which are the core components based on which you will create a catalog matrix or diagram for example uh, if it's a stakeholder matrix that you are creating as a catalog right or stakeholder matrix is actually a matrix <laughs> so if you are creating a stakeholder matrix then every stakeholder will be a building block right so uh, so there is a building block type for example actor is a building block type and stakeholder is a type of actor so you know you have stakeholders you have users you have business users you can name them whatever you want to but ultimately the type is actor so this actor is a type of building block you know there are many such building blocks like there is physical application component or physical uh, or or logical application component or data entity and so on and so forth these are and these are defined in the content meta model so you know this <laughs> there's a quite a lot to it and it's very difficult to explain the entire toga framework within 8 to 10 minutes but but for now you understand that there are building blocks which are types of um things right and then you have catalogs matrices and diagrams which use these types of things to create a picture and then you have deliverables which may or may contain your various artifacts and you know text and so on and so forth so this essentially forms the uh, two major parts of toga framework one is the method second is the content and then we have the capability framework within which it tells you things such as how to hire how to train what are the skills that are necessary for various roles or how do you build an architecture board or how do you conduct meetings you know best practices etc about all that you know so this is your togaf framework slightly deeper dive obviously i cannot do a full deep dive in 8 to 10 minutes but this is complex a little bit and it is comprehensive right there is series guides of course which is not a part of the core framework but there is a lot of guidance around you know how to do enterprise architecture or how to set up a team or you know how to train a team or uh, how to perform governance and so on and so forth that's a wrap for today um, i hope you have enjoyed this video and have learned something out of it i am 100% sure you will have 100 questions about today's episode please feel free to write to me or put comments on the video if you enjoy the video then don't forget to let youtube know like share and subscribe and comment and once again enterprise architecture radio is not just a podcast it is a collaboration platform the more you talk the more fun it is so talk to each other guide each other learn from each other but most importantly have a ton of fun